Welcome back to Piney Grove, folks. My name's Brad. I'm out here on our 20 acres in Northwest Florida that we bought five years ago and we're turning into a homestead. Today's video is gonna be the second part of doing a hardscape, or at least that's what I think it's called. You know, we're doing some landscaping around the new house that we built out here and I want to take railroad ties and create a basin. I started that process yesterday in a different video and I'll put the link up above me. But what I'm trying to do is take these railroad ties and create a basin. And I think that's called a hardscape versus a landscape. If it's called something else, put it down in the comment below. I'm no expert landscaper here. But the first thing we're gonna do this morning is cut two five foot sections to create the, um, the width of the basin. And I think we're gonna need three or four of these full length railroad ties, which are about nine foot to finish the long side. So let's get to it. I've got these older railroad ties that aren't as solid as these more expensive, I guess, newer ones. I don't know how old they are, but uh, these are definitely more rotted. So I'm trying to see if I can get five foot out of these rather than cutting up the good ones. I think I can, I just gotta look around here. If you've never dealt with railroad ties before, they're not perfect. They're not all the same width, they're not all the same length, and they come in different um, grades, I guess. And I've got some that are really, really decayed in the center. They're still solid as far as a full length, but if you start cutting them, you'll start exposing cavities and stuff inside of them. And I don't wanna use them because I want this to last a long time. So I don't wanna be replacing railroad ties in 10 years. These last a very long time, but some of these already have a lot of use out of them. So I've got a good one here. I've measured it five feet, and I've got a good one here that I've measured five feet. And these two particular railroad ties are eight foot long, and the rest of them are around nine foot long. So there's just a lot, a lot of variation. They're also very dirty. So if you cut wood with a chainsaw and you wanna cut a railroad tie, you're only gonna get a couple cuts out of it before your chain is totally dull. I'm gonna wipe as much dirt as I can off these railroad ties and then try and make these two cuts with our MS-210 steel chainsaw. Pretty hard. I've got the cornerstone laid now. I've got the five footer coming away from the foundation in. And as I look at it, it's actually farther away than five foot because it's held off by some concrete. So I've got to change my marking stick there. But I'm good there. Then I put down the first full length going that way. And again, I got to kick that end out a little because this is farther than five feet. But I got a ripping, a two by four ripping down there. I put a five foot mark on. And that way I just know how far to level the trench because I kept leveling it all the way out the full width of the trench. And that's not necessary because the trench is wider than the railroad ties. So that was wasting a lot of time. But I left this little gully in here to run the drain pipe, which will run underneath and keep going that way. Just gonna go on down the line here and pack and level, pack and level and put in more railroad ties. I gotta work around that septic clean out. So I've got the short pieces I cut off earlier, I'm gonna try and fit around there so I don't have to use another full railroad tie. Just keep working my way down the line. I took some measurements right here and here for that septic drain. And I think I can notch this out so that I can keep part of this intact and go right around that drain or clean out is what it's called. We're gonna give it a shot.
All right, guys, we about got the railroad ties in. I got it all the way to the end. I got the other end dug out. All that's nice and level. I just got one little section of spice in. We're gonna use a piece of the cutoff from this morning when I cut them two eight footers to get the two five foot pieces out of it. I used one piece for the septic clean out and now I got the last piece over here. Cut a couple of feet, well, maybe about 18 inches off of it and it'll fit perfectly. All right, there's the last piece. I got that corner all done and I just gotta cut this piece and put it in. It's a bit windy, so bear with it, please. But I gotta make this one cut with that chainsaw, and that chain's pretty dull, as you saw from the notch around the septic clean-out. So I'm hoping I can get one more cut out of it. It did it, but just barely. She was smoking. It's really, really hard. It's dirty. The chain is dull. But we got through it. We got that last piece cut. Not a bad cut for a dull chainsaw. It's a little narrower. It's also down a little further. So I'm gonna pick it back up, put some dirt under it. Okay, I got all the railroad ties in and level. Everything's nice and tight. I backfilled a little bit with a shovel. Now it's time to jump on the Kubota L3901 and get this completely backfilled and graded off. Okay guys, here's where we're at. I got the perforated pipe all cut to length. I had to notch out the railroad tie, so I actually had to make two more cuts with the chainsaw, and that's all it wanted. It was so dull, it was smoking, but I got through that notch. It's not gonna be flowing in a downhill manner. By that I mean there's not gonna be a lot of slope, but it's not negative, so that's good. It'll be either level or a slight bit of slope. And I've got the plastic cut. I've got the staple ready. I'm gonna try in this wind, to get the plastic put down and then I got to screed some rocks and put some rocks over it and this should be done I got a couple more hours left but let me show you where we're at so I had to notch that out there for the pipe to go in and as I mentioned this isn't perfectly sloped from the house to this trench but top of this railroad tie is lower than the hardy board so if this basin were ever to overfill water wouldn't go into the house it would flow over top of the railroad ties I got it all set, got everything in and packed. It's not gonna be fun putting this plastic in in the wind, but it's what I got, so I'm gonna go ahead and tackle it. Guys, I got that plastic in. The wind actually wasn't that big a deal with it, but uh, it's all in, I've got it weighted down. I put the perforated pipe in and now I have to go get some rocks. I'm right here at the end. I'm running out of gas personally, but I can see the end. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out. I gotta go screed some rocks. So I'm gonna grab the tractor, go over to the rock pile, screed some rocks and start filling this in. So real quick, the reason why the pipe at the end here is shorter is because that ends a little taller on that, on that side of the house. And I didn't need the pipe to go all the way. So what I'm gonna do is put a piece of rat wire there. I don't have any rat wire, but I'll show you how I fix that on another pipe. So that's what I mean by rat wire. That's just some quarter inch galvanized wire there that keeps the rocks from going in there. And that just keeps that entrance hole open so water can flow in there. And that's what I'm gonna do over here as well. So there's no pipe in here cause it's not needed. I'll just fill that with rocks and all the water will flow to that, to the end of that pipe. And I'll put the rat wire around the end of that pipe. Now the, all the holes of the perforated pipe are facing down and that allows the water to seep through the rocks and come into the pipe. In the past, I have put the holes on the top and that's wrong. So if you're watching this, holes down on perforated pipe. I did a whole video on why I screed rocks, but this is a homemade wire screed that I made. These are some river rock I bought to do different French drain projects here around the farm, but it's got a lot of fines in it. A lot of like sand and grit and small pieces of rock. It wasn't cleaned very well. 
and I found if I use it as is, it'll clog my drains, my French drains. So I screed it, so I get all the little stuff out. The little stuff goes in the wheelbarrow. The big rocks go into the tractor bucket. It's aggravating because I paid a lot of money for these rocks and they got way too many small rocks in here for about the amount that I paid. What do you think? About four more buckets? I don't know, I wish there was only one. Well guys, I really thought I could get this done tonight, but it's six o'clock. I'm worn out, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. I just don't have anything left in me. I've touched every one of those rocks that's in there. Probably need about two more buckets, but I've got enough now that if the wind picks up or we get any storms, it'll be good to go. I just got to come back later and put uh, one or two more buckets in it. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and share with your friends. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care y'all.